Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Now it may be a surprise to some of you, it may not be a surprise, but Narcissa Malfoy was not the biggest fan of Lord Voldemort and she didn't really like him all that much. As a matter of fact, she was more interested in supporting her husband's role in the Dark Lord's inner circle, believing she was doing as any wife would, standing by the man she married. Now don't get me wrong here guys, Narcissa Malfoy was not a goody two-shoes and she wasn't against everything that the Death Eater stood for. Oh no, she was a pure blood supremacist and upheld her family's beliefs that the wizarding world needed to be restored to pure blood wizards and witches only. Before today's video begins, I'd like to take a brief moment to talk about today's sponsor, Audible. Everyone, when it comes to sponsors, I never recommend anything that I don't believe would be beneficial for you all, and since my entire YouTube channel is based on a book series, you're probably starting to see why I'm so happy to partner up with such an awesome company. Guys, I have used Audible for years and could not be happier recommending this app to you all. Many of you are also aware I've got a second vampire-based YouTube channel, so my chosen audiobook at the moment is Blood and Gold by Anne Rice, which comes after my last audiobook, The Vampire Armand. It's amazing to hear both Marius and Armand's different takes on the same situation when they crossed paths. If you haven't read any of Anne's work, please do. With that being said, it isn't just audiobooks, guys. The Audible app has podcasts, wellness programs, theatrical performances, A list comedy, and exclusive Audible originals. You won't find anywhere else. It is everything you love to listen to all in one app. You have a playlist for life. Trust me everyone, there will be no regrets if you take my advice and choose to download this app. Audible are so confident that you'll find something you like that they want to give you an incredible offer, an incredible deal today. Audible want you to have 30 days free on them. Try it out. See how you feel. There's nothing to lose and only listening convenience to gain. Guys, to avail of your offer, you can click the link in the description below or go to your web browser and type in audible.com forward slash HP folklore. That's audible.com forward slash HP folklore. Or if you want even more simplicity, simply text HP folklore to 500 500. Three different quick ways to get your free trial now. Let me know what audiobook you choose in the comment section below. Narcissa, as you may know, was from the Black family, who are avid supporters of keeping the bloodlines pure, and out of all the three sisters, she really did nail it on the head in terms of not only choosing the right partner, but also choosing for love. Let's look at her other two sisters for examples. Andromeda married Ted Tonks and well we all know how that one went down. Long story short, she was cast out from the black family and had her name stricken from the family tree, but the positive is she married for love, so she got something out of it. Bellatrix on the other hand, well she's the opposite. She married a suitable partner in Rodolphus Lestrange, but she didn't love him, so that wasn't exactly the most pleasant of marriages I can imagine. Narcissa, as I said, got both. Lucky her, but she still supported Lucius in all of his decisions. And many of you may have already noticed that Narcissa was not a Death Eater. Everyone else in the inner circle was a Death Eater. Everyone sitting at that table in Malfoy Manor was a Death Eater, but Narcissa never received the Dark Mark. Now, that was down to one reason. She didn't want to devote her entire life to serving Voldemort. She didn't want her main purpose in life to be one that's in a debt to the Dark Lord. Her only goal was to make sure her son Draco was well looked after and that he had a good upbringing. Well, that upbringing needs a look at. It's very questionable, but maybe for another video. Lucius was the Death Eater. He was actually Voldemort's right hand man at one point and for a time. With her husband being in such a prominent position, Narcissa believed that Voldemort was the man to bring upon the change that the Wizarding World needed. However, that was before she seen the cruel, unforgiving side of the Dark Lord. She never seen it because Lucius was never on the end of it until Voldemort's return to power. Now the truth is, Voldemort knew all along that Lucius' loyalty, it wavered. It was not truly with him. 
He knew that Lucius would choose himself every single time or choose his family over the Dark Lord, and we all know that Voldemort simply could not have that. Lucius proved this by publicly denying his involvement with Voldemort after the First Wizarding War, claiming to be under the Imperious Curse. He didn't really bother too much to look for the Dark Lord either, instead preferring to settle into his own comfy life with his job in the Ministry and meddling in Hogwarts affairs. So while things were nice and cosy for Lucius first time round, Voldemort was not as forgiving on his return to power and severely punished him for his failure to retrieve the prophecy. Then the Dark Lord proceeded to bring his son into it, setting up Draco to fail so he could punish him also, most likely by killing him. Narcissa, who always watched from her husband's shadow, would not tolerate this treatment of the two people she loved. She appealed to Severus Snape for the sake of her son which was successful, and Snape also secured the release of Lucius from Azkaban. So, Narcissa had to watch her son, at just 16 years of age, attempt to withstand the pressures of becoming a Death Eater so young. Draco was trying to live up to his father's reputation and actually become the Death Eater he thought he should be. Well, you'll already be aware that it nearly destroyed him. She knew it was only a matter of time before Voldemort would look to once again punish her husband, so it's no surprise she took her chance when the opportunity presented itself and displayed the two moments of bravery. The first was when she lied directly to Voldemort's face, falsely informing him that Harry Potter was dead. If there's one lesson to learn from Voldemort, it's the fact that you pretty much cannot lie to him. He can always tell. Not only did Narcissa successfully fool him, Harry himself, to her own surprise, managed to hold in the excruciating pain from Voldemort's Crucialis curse, which backed up her claim that the boy was dead. She knew that Harry was the only chance that anyone had of defeating the Dark Lord. She had switched allegiance long before that moment, but this was the first action she actually took. It did not take much for Narcissa to switch off or check out of her loyalty towards Lord Voldemort, and that was down to her family being threatened and mistreated. Her next act was refusing to partake in the Battle of Hogwarts, caring only about the well-being of her son Draco. At this point, she craved the Dark Lord's final downfall. There was no way she wanted a world with this person as its leader. She was also clever enough to have aided Harry Potter while not fighting during the battle even though she was there, which means that the evidence of her help was there, it was apparent, and there's no way Harry Potter would have denied that she assisted him as it wasn't in his nature. Now, although Draco definitely seems to have learned his lesson, Lucius did not. Even after Voldemort's defeat, even after getting caught, then being broken out of prison and not sent back there after the war ended, even after being point blank guilty of the crimes of being a Death Eater, Lucius still voiced his disapproval of Muggleborns and everything that surrounded them. He still wanted a pure blood society and I would not be surprised to see him support the next up and coming young daring wizard who wants to make a change, which is something I feel made Narcissa resent the Dark Lord even more. Narcissa Malfoy had seen complete stability for the first 13 years of Draco's life, so to see that become unsettled was not something she welcomed. So everyone with that being said, that is my video on why Narcissa hated Lord Voldemort. As I said at the beginning of the video, it's not entirely a surprise that she wasn't his biggest fan, and I hope that after today's video you can understand why that was. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.